journey from Durban to Pontaland is about two hours. It's another two on a pothole road to Lusikisiki. Choppers are coming in. We're chasing a minister and his entourage. Both they and us are headed for the great place. Well, we're here. This is the great place, the Pondo Royalties Residence. Um, a delegation from um, government is here to f officially and formally inform the Pondo Royalty exactly what is going on with both the mining and the proposed N2 toll road. A number of ministries are expected. We're going to take photos. Oh, I hope so. We're already doing that. Our aim is to record this official meeting with Pondo Royalty. Remember, we're not talking. No Clearly, this wasn't going to be easy, considering the controversy surrounding these sensitive developments. That's it. <laughs> a major highway and dune mining in a beautiful, largely unspoiled rural environment. We're not allowed into that meeting, but what's even worse is that some of the people that the Pondo Queen has invited on her behalf have also been asked to leave the room, and this is people like Kathy Kay from the Wildlife and Environment Society, political parties um, such as the Independent Democrats and the DA. All right, so apparently the Queen has got them to move and the meeting is now open. It's difficult to know what to expect. The minister's entourage flew over the prospective mining area this morning. And he has over 200 objections to the N2 toll road to contend with. We're expecting the Pondo King or Queen to address us. Well, press has been kicked out. It really is hard to believe that this type of treatment of the press by government exists. No, they, they locked the door and closed us out. So I want to say thank you on behalf of civil society that you actually said to the minister. The contents of the meeting remain hearsay for both us and the Otherwise public. We wouldn't be sitting in this hall. The Pondo Queen offered her view. There are so many things that happen on the ground that we don't get to know. About. So what they have to Any prove to you is that all of the jobs along the toll road are long term <laughs> and no, they cannot no. do that. We, we need to know how a toll road develops people or how it has ever developed people anywhere in the world. He hasn't given us the impression that he, he will force his vision on us. You know? mm. People here are angry because they have not been consulted on the projects. I think what was emphasized here was the need to consult with the people who have got rights on this land. Minister Van Skalkveig actually finds himself in a very difficult position and it's up to him to actually assert the need for real consultation for the environment and for the people of Ponderland. And we've noticed that throughout this entire process with regards to the anti toll road as well as the mining, that certain procedures have been flawed. Um, and what we saw today, um, particularly when they tried to shut some of us out, we saw that that same tendency was coming up again. By chopper, it's 20 minutes to Umtata for the press conference. We did the two-hour road trip and arrived just in town. Our delegation uh, today consisted of uh, a number of senior ministers from national... I, I must ask, would the mining be feasible if that road does not take the current proposed route? But we cannot answer that question. That's a question that a private company that's interested in mining must answer. And would you have the power to veto a mining decision from any other department? It is one area that is still with the Minister of Mineral and Energy Affairs and not with the Department of the Environment. We passed a law in 2002 which stipulates that uh, before you start any mining operations, you have to consult with the local people. That includes the Royal House. As a province, we feel we have not consulted enough and it is now that we are going to have a very strong consultation around these issues. What normally happens with the bills? Either you say yes, unamended, or yes, but with amendments. You know, the road not here, but you know, move it a few kilometers to that side or whatever the case. And the third one is to say no. Yeah, as I said, it's both my view as well as that of the department that we don't think that Ponderland deserves mining. There are much better ways to create jobs and economic growth here. Okay. Bye, Diana. Goodbye. Our new Minister of Environment has stated that his personal opinion is that mining cannot coexist with ecotourism in the Ponda region. But what happens in the government circles is another story.
The aim of our visit uh, was twofold. First of all, to visit some of the areas in Pondo land that may be affected by decisions that uh, we are required to take at government level. Uh, and secondly, secondly to, uh, to also uh, pay a courtesy visit at uh, the great place to uh, pay our respects to, to the royal family. With regard to our visit there, we were warmly received by the royal family. We uh, were very courteously uh, received and we had a very good meeting there. With uh, regard to the issues that affect Pondo land and with regard to which we are required to take some decisions, there are three areas that I would like to highlight. Firstly, there is the proposed toll road. The National Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism took a certain decision. That decision was communicated to the public. It is well known. We received over 200 appeals. Many of those appeals are not with regard to the environmental dimension of the road, but uh, objections to the tolling of the road, etc. At the moment, we have a team of specialists working through all those appeals, and uh, I will receive those appeals within uh, the next few weeks. I will apply my mind properly and take a decision. The second issue is the issue of uh, the possibility of mining in Pondo land. The Deputy Minister reported back to the meeting, and the facts very briefly are that uh, this specific mining company, an Australian-based company, applied for a prospecting license. They received one, and the uh, expiry date is the end of July. They or nobody else has applied to mine in Pondo land. So there is no application on any table, as some of the rumours will have it no application from anybody. Then uh, thirdly, what uh, we will also be discussing with uh, the other spheres of government over the next few weeks is the concept of a conservation area in Pondo land to make sure that we also start giving impetus to the kind of development that we want here. This visit was important because all of us agree <coughs> that we need to formulate a specific vision for this area. And depending on that vision, our decisions will become much easier. What kind of development do we want here? And uh, how are we going to convince all the stakeholders to buy into, into that vision? And uh, I would like to, as we have assured the Royal House, that we will deal with all these processes with integrity, according to all the legal prescribes, etc. But we will also make sure that we consult properly, not only with the different spheres of government, but also with the local communities. That's basically it. Um, yes. You talk about uh, consultation. I'm um, a little bit confused about that. Um, because if you're only at this stage um, approaching or consulting, talking to the Pondo uh, Tribal Authority, how can you then talk, um, say that you, you've been consulting? Um, there's already a, a, record of a, a record of decision that's uh, made on the N2 toll road. It, it depends on what you are referring to. Mm -hmm. First of all, as I said, we would like to agree on a broader vision for this area. And that's the process that we are now busy with. With regard to the N2 toll road, very in-depth discussions, consultations took place with regard to that. The CEO of the National Roads Agency <coughs> is here. I was informed, was it 38 consultations took place from their side with regard to that. And there you are right. A record of decision was issued. A decision was taken by the department. Against that decision, we have 223 appeals. Now, that appeals are what I will now consider and apply my mind. So there is no consultation process with regard to that part of the process, because that will be improper. The public had the opportunity to appeal and to put their view forward, and that is what will now be considered. With regard to the other issues, the conservation area, what model we adopt, there we are only starting the process, and obviously there will be proper and in-depth uh, consultation on, on that issue. And then with regard to the issue, if ever 
the issue of mining comes up, then of course there are certain prescribed consultation processes. But here I would like um, to, on the issue of mining, say, we, it's one of those difficult issues. I think the Deputy Minister put it very well at our meeting with the Royal House. Legally, any company can apply for a prospecting license or a mining license in any part of the country. We cannot stop them. And we cannot say to them before the time, don't apply because you're not going to give that license to you as a government or as a department. And that is why it is so important that we try to agree on a vision so that it will become for all of us much easier to take decisions in future with regard to roads, infrastructure, mining, etc. But we have to respect uh, the laws that we ourselves make. The issue of the context of this visit as well against the backdrop of Eastern Cape being one of the poorest provinces in South Africa. So the, <coughs> the political commitment of the ANC government of making sure that the poverty, the unemployment that exists in Eastern Cape, and in particular in this area of Pondoland, we need to deal with it as a matter of extreme agency. So all these uh, planned interventions within the context of this wild coast uh, spatial development initiative, I think, is going to make a major boost to the economy of this area and also provide our people with much needed assets as well as uh, to have the livelihood that they richly deserve. So there they is uh, that commitment from the ANC government of making sure that these processes are going to be concluded as soon as possible. We passed a law in 2002 uh, the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act, which stipulates that uh, before you start any mining operations, you have to consult with the local people. That includes the Royal House, and which stipulates that you have to carry out operations and imp environmental impact studies to make, to make sure that uh, whatever operation takes place, that will not have a negative impact on the environment. You also have to look at the social, the, the local communities. What kind of development are they going to benefit out of that? For instance, if any operations take place, we make sure that the locals are the ones that are employed. We make sure that there is training, there is development. And so, as uh, Minister von Skalvik was saying, our laws are actually taking care of the consultation. No operation can ever take place before such consultation, thorough consultation, has been done. If you're concerned about economic um, upliftment and if you're still um, you know, working out a plan for the Pondo region, why then go ahead with the road um, in its current proposed route? Um, I, 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 you know, if, if, you, if you don't have a plan yet for economic development, why go with this road? Why put on the road first before um, coming up with a plan and also why not strengthen the existing road um, and the existing um, uh, communities? That is exactly the kind of question that we cannot answer today because that is what I would have to consider in considering all those appeals. Because the question that you now ask is an argument that many of the people and institutions who objected to the road made in their submissions and that is what I must now apply my mind to. But this is exactly the point. We, we want, as Minister Khadebe said, as a government, we want development here. We want to create jobs here. The question is, what is the best approach? Is the best approach ecotourism, where we put in infrastructure, roads, wherever they go, uh, and, and other kinds of infrastructure? How do, you, how do we develop tourism? Or do we want traditional methods of, of, of economic growth here? And the sense is no. We would like to go the ecotourism way. But to do that, we want to make sure that all of us agree and that everything is in place. And, and that question we will be able to answer after the appeals process. And I just would like to add on that because the province has got a provincial growth and development strategy. It's a very good strategy because it is trying to outline the economic hubs that we have in the whole province. Uh, we have uh, the auto industry in the western side, we've got the agriculture side, uh, and the massive food distribution on the other side. So 
These planes that come from National have not found a vacuum. They actually are complementing uh, what the province has already done. And we feel that we have uh, uh, done a lot of work uh, to really bring this to our people. So there is an economic development plan and it's working very well. We are launching now the plan uh, next week. You were talking about um, looking at a Ponderland um, eco, um, eco project. Um, are you aware that plans for a Ponderland, a, a greater Ponderland park, a marine and land reserve were done by the University of Natal with your department about five years ago? Yes, Lou, and as you may be aware, we recently announced the marine protected area. Uh, which is one of the results of, of that study. And that is why our department feels so strongly that this area is, is, is one of the areas in the country that lends itself to ecotourism and linking uh, uh, preservation and protection uh, on land or at land, also with that at sea. And we now have this MPA. How long is it, uh, DG? How f it's... it's Port Edward to Port St. John. Yes, how many kilometers? It's quite a stretch. Uh, about 120 kilometers. Yes. So, uh, and, and, and that is what we would like to use, all these building blocks, uh, to, to create the kind of region here that will be based on ecotourism. What exactly were you telling the Royal House with regard to the area of the Eastern Ponderland? Because some members of the community are concerned about the, the consultation you're talking about. Are they agreeing with the proposal or the ideas of developing that area and the way you want to develop it? The question of Tolobe mining area site, the, the question of toll road plus, to, and to toll road. Are they supporting that idea? Yeah. First of all, and, and I think the Premier must, must answer the one part of the question if people agree. We did not convey to the Royal House at all that we plan to allow mining or that we're going to approve the toll road. What? we conveyed to the Royal House is exactly what we conveyed to you now. Here are the three areas that we need decisions. Uh, this is the status of each of, of the three areas in terms of processes. With regard to mining, as I said, no application for mining has been received. With regard to the N2 toll road, there is no <coughs> question of us simply proceeding. There's an appeals process, and those appeals must now be considered. What Minister Khadebe said, he said, we are waiting for an answer. If the answer is yes, or an amended answer, his department and the National Roads Agency is in a position to immediately proceed for the very reasons that he outlined. And then with regard to the conservation uh, area, I said we will now start the processes to get agreement on exactly what model. So it's not as we went there today and said, this is what we're going to do. We said to them, this is where we are, but we would like to further discuss it with you. There are some concerns from the people from the Kolobeni area. Have you met them at some stage? And then, if you're not, why? If yes, what is the feeling? I have not uh, yet been there personally. This is my first visit. I said early in my term that it is a priority to come here and uh, pay my respects to the Royal House and see this area firsthand. But there has been consultations by our department, by officials of the department, and also by the provincial government. So maybe I think uh, the Premier must answer. But how long is it going to take you to look at these appeals and to come back and deal with this kind of issue once and for all and over? With regard to the appeals, we've appointed a team of specialists that are working through all those appeals. <coughs> and it's quite a task to do that, because some of them are quite comprehensive, detailed, etc. And there are a lot of legalities also involved. It's not simply emotional appeals. Some of them are, but a lot of them are quite complicated and detailed. I hope to receive those appeals on my table within the next few weeks, and then I will apply my mind. But it will still take some time, because this thing has been on our desks for years, and I would like to take a decision, but it will be irresponsible to simply take a decision for the sake of a decision. The lives of many people will be affected. This whole area will be affected, no matter what decision we take. So we are going to treat it quite serious. Because I yes. want to talk about consultation. <laughs> you know, um, we, we are in the process of consulting our people. The way we did it, we do admit that it was not uh, efficient and it was not enough.
And therefore, we have now taken a, a view that says that we have to have an intensive consultation with our people. From a few uh, meetings that we have had as the, 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 the province, we have found that there are people who are anxious about their land uh, rights issues. Some are anxious about the road that's going to pass not very far from their houses. Those concerns, as the minister said, are concerns that are justifiable, and we are going to look into all those things. But as a province, we feel we have not consulted enough and it is now that we are going to have a very strong consultation around these issues. I, I know that you've said that the mining and the road are not linked, um, but I, I must ask, would the mining be feasible if that road does not take the current proposed route? It's not linked at all in our minds, but we cannot answer that question. That's a question that a private company that's interested in mining must answer. Is it feasible or not? But maybe I should state this as my own view and that of the department, and I've said that to Parliament. As a department, from the point of view of a very unique ecosystem here in Pondoland and the Wild Coast, we are opposed to mining in that area. But at this stage, I can say it on behalf of myself as the responsible minister for the environment and of the department. And that is what this process is about, to see if we can get a broader agreement in government, because each of us has a responsibility. But the feasibility, how profitable it will be, etc., is not an answer that government can give. It's an answer that private companies can give after they have considered all the facts. At the moment, sustainable development is needed in this uh, area of Pondo land. And unfortunately, very short-term plans are being made at the expense of the environment and as well at the expense of the people of this area. Through subtle intimidation and sometimes manipulation, these plans are being forced on the local people from a national and provincial level because of imperatives there and not at uh, what is needed on the ground. Please hang up and try again.